Welcome back to session two of the Daniel Plan series. This week we're going to be focusing on the essential of food. It's something that we all love, that we all partake in several times a day, and I think frankly the area that we could use the most input of how to get some amazing choices going in our life that are actually replenishing, building, and really helping us to move forward in our journey of health. And so we've crafted for you an amazing session, starting with Pastor Rick, laying the foundation of the biblical inspiration for taking care of ourselves. And then we have the privilege of being interviewed by Dr. Mark Hyman. He's one of our founding doctors. He um, has the coined phrase, food as medicine. He has found a way to choose foods that are not only delicious, but add energy and vitality into our life. His tips are so practical. I think they're gonna really help all of us on our journeys towards health. So sit back, relax, enjoy yourself, and I hope this session is so building for you as you move forward. Thanks so much. You know, I've definitely struggled with, you know, making healthy choices my whole life. I've struggled with an eating disorder for, for a lot of my life. I've been having migraine headaches probably weekly for probably three or four years and, and really impeding my life. I have a huge, huge family history on both sides of my uh, family with, uh, uh, cholesterol issues. You know, it's kind of a sugar fiend, so, and which is bad for me because I've got uh, in my uh, genetics and my grandparents, they're all diabetic, and, and I'm just thinking, wow, uh, well, I've got to stop doing all these things. My husband and I participate in the Daniel Plan together uh, through our small group, but I must say that he probably provided a little bit more resistance than I would have liked. So I tried a lot of new recipes and I would say probably about 50% of it stuck and the other 50% I got some pushback. But I don't see sodas in my house anymore and cream corn is no longer our fifth food group. So we've made some big progress. <laughs> After a little while, you'll stop craving sodas or sugar or whatever it is. And in the first uh, 60 days, I lost close to 35 pounds. When I came through the other side, I'd lost 12 pounds, which was a bonus. I was clear of thinking. I lost 30 pounds. I was a 34 waist. I'm now loose on a 31. If Dr. Hyman said, this is what you need to eat for breakfast, that's what I ate. If they said I need to drink so many ounces of water, that's what I did. I didn't have a stiffness and, and you know, swelling in my hands and joints. I didn't have any more headaches. I just did what they said. If they said it, I did it. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Daniel Plan Session 2. Now, in our first session, we looked at what I call the faith factor, the six things that God says he wants to give us to make changes in our lives based on Romans chapter 8. Now, in this section, we're going to look at God's prescription for your physical health. Specifically, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is food. Food glorious food. Now I grew up in a family where the dining room table was literally the centerpiece of our home. We didn't just have a regular sized dining room table. This thing was a monster and every major function in our home revolved around that table. So every happy memory in my life growing up was connected to food and every sad memory in my life growing up was connected to food. Now despite all that eating, you know until my mid-twenties I was about as skinny as a bean pole, but something slowed down in me and I started packing on the pounds. That didn't happen all at once, just two or three pounds a year, but after pastoring Saddleback Church for 30 years, it all added up to about 90 pounds of excess weight. You know, and I have to admit, I really didn't think about it until a couple of years ago when I was baptizing some people. And on that day, I actually baptized over 800 people in a single day. Now at Saddleback, we baptize, um, the way they did in the Bible by putting people under the water uh, as Jesus was in the Jordan River. And so I was lifting people back and forth and right about person number 400 in that baptism, I suddenly had an epiphany. I thought, man, we're all fat. <laughs> so I, and then I thought about it, but I'm fat. And, uh, and how can I be an example to our people if, if, uh, if I'm not taking care of my body? So I started doing a little research and I discovered that about seven in 10 Americans, in other words, 69% of us are overweight. I discovered that diabetes and heart disease have become pandemic diseases in the last five years or at least 10 years, all because of weight related lifestyle issues. There are now 80 million people in America who are diabetic or pre-diabetic. Now listen to this. 
Around the globe, about 20 million people a year die from infectious diseases. That's unacceptable. But 50 million people will die from weight-related diseases. In other words, more people are going to die from diabetes and heart disease than from infectious diseases uh, and, and things like HIV AIDS. Then I discovered another amazing statistic. Right now, for the first time in history, there are as many people in the world dying from obesity as there are people who are dying from now malnutrition. That stunned me uh, because we've been working through what we call the peace plan, tell people in poverty all around the world, people who didn't have enough to eat. When I realized that as many people were dying from too much food as not enough food, I realized something needs to change. And when I thought about my own church and specifically when I thought about myself, I thought we need a plan. And that's when we started the Daniel plan. Now let's look at what God has to say about the importance of physical health. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is the classic Bible passage on the Bible, and here's what it says. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Now what is God saying here? He's saying that some things in life are not necessarily wrong, they're just not necessary. In other words, you're free to do whatever you want, but not everything in life is beneficial. And God says, you should say to yourself, I'm not going to be mastered by anything. I'm not going to let anything, whether it's food or anything, dominate me. I'm not going to be addicted or controlled by anything. The Bible continues with this verse. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food. That was a classic uh, Greek statement in those days, and Paul just quotes it. But he says, God will destroy them both. That's, that's what the prevailing attitude says. In other words, they're not going to last forever. In other words, they're not the real reason you're here. But then Paul goes on and says this, but don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now that's 1 Corinthians 6, verses 12 and verse 20. Now this passage teaches the exact opposite of what all the media and everything in society teaches you about your body. But here's the truth. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. That's what God says in the Bible. One day you're going to stand before God and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And that's going to include everything God has given you, your talents, your abilities, your friends, your freedom. It's going to include your intelligence, your gifts, your opportunities, your, your body, and everything else. What did you do with what you were given? In the book Purpose Driven Life, I talk about how life is a test, and life is a temporary assignment, and life is preparation for eternity. And God is watching you to see if he can trust you with what he puts into your hands. Now, one of the things that God has entrusted you, and you've had it since the moment of your first breath, is this, your body, your physical body. God says you are to be the caretaker of your body. So what other instructions does God give us for being the caretakers of our bodies? Well, the Bible also talks about the balance of eating and sleeping and exercise and rest. Psalm 127 verse 2 is a good verse for those of you who are workaholics. It says this, it's senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. Are you getting your proper rest? You know, long before science uncovered the damage of excess sweets, the Bible had already talked about it. Thousands of years ago in Proverbs 25, it says, eating too much honey is not good. Now, how did they know that? Because God told them. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, don't get drunk on wine, which can ruin you. And so the Bible says, don't get drunk. And in 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says, whatever you eat or whatever you drink or whatever you do, you must do it all for the glory of God. We call this the food factor. Now, if we pay attention to these instructions about sleeping and eating and drinking, 
don't you think we'd have a whole lot fewer health problems? Of course we would. It's very obvious that Americans' health and even health around the world is quickly deteriorating. We're living longer, but we have more unhealth in our lives. And people are becoming handicapped with all kinds of health problems from sedentary living. And all of these health problems are making us sick and tired. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Well, welcome to the Daniel Plan. <laughs> you see, the cost of all these things that we pay for in health care, we know that today it's soaring. Time magazine has reported that of the $2.5 trillion spent on health care in America each year, listen to this, 75% of all spent on health care, of all the money spent on health care, stems from chronic diseases, which can be prevented by lifestyle choices. Do you know what that means? It means it's up to us, it's up to you, it's up to me. All of that expense, all of that insurance, uh, we wouldn't need it all if we lived more responsibly, healthy, the way God tells us to live in his word. 75% of all that health care is due to the fact that we're not managing, monitoring, and caring for our bodies. So I want you to ask yourself the simple question. Are the things that I'm doing to my body and the things that I'm putting in my body bringing glory to God and honoring his temple. That's what Mac, Dr. Mark Hyman, my friend, is going to talk about with us today. Mark is one of the Daniel Plan founding doctors that I recruited who has dedicated his life to functional medicine and teaching people how to heal their bodies by eating properly, by good nutrition. Now, this isn't a new concept. Thousands of years ago, Hippocrates, the great Greek doctor, said, let food be thy medicine. So Dr. Hyman's gonna teach us how to make small changes that over time will yield big results. But before we join Dr. Hyman, I'd like to pray for you. Would you bow your heads? Father, you created our bodies. You sent Jesus to pay for our bodies. And then you sent the Holy Spirit to live in our bodies. Help us to never forget that our bodies belong to you, not us. Forgive us for all the times we've misused and abused our bodies and our health. And today we commit together to join in a journey of health, to follow your health plan for your glory. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. As we continue on with session two, the main feature of it is going to be focusing on food and how it's about abundance, not deprivation. I'm so thrilled to be joined with Dr. Mark Hyman. He's Hi, one of dude. our founding doctors. <laughs> Hi, buddy. So nice to have you here. Mark did a, a cross-country flight to make this video shoot. He's an amazing doctor and friend to myself, my family, the Saddleback family. And I think as you cue in online, you'll um, feel that way about him as well. So Mark. You, when I think of you, I think of three words. Well, I think of a lot of things, but the three <laughs> words I think of in this area is food as medicine. That's right. So tell me a little bit about how food can actually heal and some of your key thoughts on that. Absolutely. You know, Dee, one of the things that we're learning is that food isn't just calories mm -hmm. and energy. It's actually got instructions, and it tells your body what to do. It tells it to get sick or it tells it to get healthy. And depending on the quality of the food you eat, depends on the quality of your health. It's such a simple idea, mm -hmm. but most people don't get it. I mean, what if you have, you know, Doritos and a Coke and, you know, a big Cinnabon, is that good for your body? What messages is that sending to your genes? Mm -hmm. Versus if you have, you know, some fresh real food, like a piece of chicken, a salad, you know, a potato, just simple food, real mm -hmm. food. Yes. It has very different instructions to mm -hmm. your body. If you want to really think about what we're eating, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are the foods that God made? And mm -hmm. what are the foods that man made, right? It's very simple. If you just stick to foods that God made, you're in good shape. God doesn't make things with a big ingredient list or the food label or a barcode usually, right? <laughs> God makes, you know, the things <laughs> of the ground, right? It makes vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and beans and whole grains, just food. Mm -hmm. And there's animals that we can eat. There's chickens and beef and lamb and there's eggs, just fish, just food. I mean, it's not that complicated. <laughs> and people think about low calorie, high fat, low fat, low carb, high carb. You know, it's just every confusing diet mm -hmm. on there on the market is mm -hmm. getting people to just give up. 
But the message is really simple. If you just eat real food, if you eat food that was <clears throat> grown in a plant, not made in a plant, if you eat food that has a very short distance from the field to the fork, Oh, I like that. It's really field simple. Fork. Nice. That's good. The feel to the fork. Okay, so for somebody starting out on this journey, they might open up their pantry or their fridge and not have and a just, lot of things from the right. field to the fork. Now, there's three things that they should look at. You have three things. If you do nothing else yes. with the Daniel plan with food, there's three things besides eating real food. Okay. It's number one, look at your labels. And if there's anything with high fructose corn syrup or trans fats or what they, they also call it hydrogenated fat or MSG or monosodium glutamate and all the other hidden names for it, then you probably shouldn't be eating it. And it's good to probably just throw it out and find other foods to eat that are good for you. And the foods that you want to eat are the foods that are in the Daniel plan, the foods that you want to add in. The things that you add are way more important than the things that you really take away, except for those three ingredients. If you just get rid of those three ingredients and then add real okay, food. Okay, so say the three ingredients again. It's high fructose corn syrup. Okay. It's trans fats or hydrogenated fat. Okay. And it's MSG. Okay, great. Because trans fats are fake franken fats that cause cancer and heart disease and diabetes and obesity. Okay. High fructose corn syrup, it's the most abundant source of calories in our diet. It's what's in barbecue sauce and salad dressing and hidden in, I mean, there's more sugar in tomato sauce than there is in Oreo cookies. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, people don't wow, know what they're eating. So you're, you're eating all this hidden <laughs> sugar. And then <laughs> the MSG, which makes you crave and binge. The way they get mice to be fat for doing research is they give them MSG, it makes them overeat. So it's, it's going to create addiction and overeating and brain chemistry problems. Okay, the one thing I have heard over and over from people trying your program is that they'll say that their palate really changed yeah. once they added in these yeah. whole foods. Right. The food industry has basically hijacked our taste buds. So real food doesn't really taste that good anymore. So you've kind of got to get your body back in balance and your cravings will go away. Your, your, your obsession about different foods will go away, your binging will go away, your body will rebalance. And you know, the Daniel plan is not about weight loss, but it happens automatically. We had people lose 100 pounds, 150 pounds, you know, people who lost 25 pounds seem like slackers, right? right. But it was, it was extraordinary. It wasn't a weight loss program. It's really about getting your body back and learning how it works and learning how to work with it rather than against it. That's ah, awesome. Now, when you talk about not being a weight loss program, being a lifestyle, about getting your health back, um, an important part when people are making these changes is that to know they're not going to be hungry. And no. I heard you say in there that this way you can actually curb your cravings. You've talked about a few principles of starting with breakfast, about yeah. the increments to eat. Can you speak to that? Because ultimately, really easy. as you enter in on this program, we want you to be satisfied. It is about abundance. It's about not being hungry. It's about a new way to live and have a, a different type of relationship with food and even the way we view food. So speak to how we can curb Absolutely. our cravings and kind of the, the pacing of that. Yeah, it's, it's really extraordinary. Now, I have people who are addicted to sugar, addicted to processed foods, and they don't believe that in less than 48 hours that their brains can completely reshift. So in 48 hours, now how does that happen? It's amazing. It's so, really quite easy because your hormones are hijacked and your brain chemistry is hijacked by these processed foods and high mm. sugar foods. So when you stop eating them, and we have something we're going to do, which is a sort of a two-week Daniel Plan reboot or detox, and it's going to allow you to see the power of eating in some very simple ways to shift these cravings. So it's, it's really quite simple. Start your day with protein. It can be a protein shake, it can be eggs, it can be even dinner for breakfast, right? Okay. Very simple. And then you want to eat regularly. You don't want to go for long periods without yeah, about eating. about how often? So, you know, at least breakfast, lunch, and dinner at regular intervals. Okay. And then maybe a snack, a handful of nuts in the morning or afternoon if you're hungry. Okay. That's it. The other thing is you really don't want to drink liquid sugar calories. You can have a shake, you can have a green juice, but you shouldn't have liquid sugar calories, which is in everything. It's in our sodas, it's fruit juices, it's energy mm -hmm. drinks, it's sports drinks, it's sweetened coffees, it's sweetened teas. I mean, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's gonna completely disrupt your brain chemistry. And then it's doing some simple things besides that, which is eating a lot of food. We want you to eat a lot of Wait, food. Wait, say that again. Day. So you, we can eat a lot of food. I eat a lot of food. I mean, Lynn and right, I I had, eat a lot of food, too. <laughs> I, I eat a lot of, see, look at us. We both eat a lot of food. You can eat a lot of food on the Daniel Plan if you eat quality food. So the other night we had roasted mushrooms with garlic. We had uh, broccoli rabe, which is a, a kind of a really nice broccoli family vegetable with mm. garlic and stir-fried in olive oil. And we had asparagus with ginger stir-fried. Yeah. And then we, we had some, you know, chicken apple sausages that I put on the grill which was maybe 25% of my plate. And most of it, I had, you know, 
three or four different kinds of vegetables. Okay. That's the main course, and it's full of fiber, it's full of nutrients. See, most of us are starving for nutrients, so we crave more food. Mm -hmm. So the more nutrient deficient you are, Interesting. the less nutrients your foods have, like processed food has almost no nutrients. I mean, how many vitamins and minerals does Coke have? Really nothing. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you have you know, the, the equivalent, for example, of let's say 240 calories of soda, which is a 20 ounce soda, mm -hmm. has 15 teaspoons of sugar. Now, you probably wouldn't put 15 teaspoons of sugar in your coffee or your tea, but you'd have one soda, that's what you're having. Wow. It has no fiber, it raises your blood sugar, it raises your insulin, it makes you hungry, it causes a fatty liver, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, causes cancer, heart disease, and dementia. You, you like right? side me on, I'm okay. definitely not going that direction. No, no, but if you have the same amount of broccoli, let's say 240 <laughs> calories of broccoli, it's, like a boat it's seven and a half broccoli. cups. I mean, good luck if you can eat seven and a half cups of broccoli, right? Right. But it's got 35 grams of fiber. It has almost no sugar. Yeah. It's packed with vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. and phytonutrients. It's so what we call nutrient dense as opposed to nutrient poor that it gives your body the things it needs so it's not looking for something all the time. <clears throat> it's amazing. So tell me a typical way you start out your breakfast then. You said to start with protein. What does that look like? So this morning, you know, I'm travel a lot and I have to figure out what I'm going to eat. So they had <laughs> something on the menu which was this egg timbali, which was like an, it was like an egg, uh, looked like an egg uh, round thing with an egg. And it said, it said uh, white, egg whites, but I had whole eggs okay. with spinach on top and some vegetables. And that was it. And I had a cup of coffee because I got in late last night. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was my breakfast. And it's great and I feel satisfied. And then nice. for lunch, we had some chicken and vegetable, grilled vegetables, right. and some berries. Very satisfied. I'm not craving anything. I'm not hungry. My mm -hmm. brain's good. I'm clear. I have energy. I mean, this is what you want to feel like. I mean, how many of you feel sluggish and tired and worn down? A lot of it has to do with what you're putting in your mouth. So if you realize that you're only a couple of days away from feeling good, and if you just sort of give it a try, it's amazing the way you can feel. Oh, I love what you just said. You said you're a couple days away from feeling good mm -hmm. and just give it a try. If you do go onto the website, we have shopping lists, we have 10 day meal plans, we have a few other tips on how to curb your cravings and all those things really work together. And I love that you don't get hungry on this plan. Mm -hmm. I love that it's a whole different way to have a relationship with food. Mm -hmm. I love you said that it's only a couple days until you feel, are feeling better. Yeah. But ultimately, when I think about my day, like I want to be super effective with my day. I've got mm -hmm. five kids, I've got mm -hmm. a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be effective at that meeting at 3 o'clock. You know, how I eat at noon makes a huge yeah. difference. The other day I had had a really stressful meeting and I got out and my blood sugar, I, it had been a while, oh, the, the stressful meeting was right during lunch and I didn't have That's my re right. re routine. And I went over to one of my associates and said, I'm starving, do you have any food in the fridge? And I was kind of at that food emergency. Yep. And she said, do you want me to run out and get you like, I said, could you get me like a great green juice over there? And I was able yeah. to have the rest of the day amazing. Yeah. But having these, things, just a little bit of planning ahead, yeah. implementing some of Mark tips, the other tips you'll see on our website, make a huge difference, mm -hmm. in, not only in your long-term health, but how you're feeling day to day moment by moment, getting home after a long day and feeling refreshed, being energized to enter into your family, friends, yeah. your life. It's really about well, designing it. your life. I think that's right. You know, the, it's it. If you, if you just think about your life as a canvas, you know, do you want it to be a beautiful painting or do you want it to be some sort of gray, foggy experience, right? Yes. And a lot of us go through life as this gray, foggy experience. I call it brain fog and food coma, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of us walk around in a food coma and we can't really love well. Yeah. We can't really connect to ourselves. We yeah. can't connect to the people who are, are close to us. Mm -hmm. We can't connect with our work. We can't connect to God. Those are the things that matter in life. So mm -hmm. it's not that food is sort of an, an end in itself to try to you know, do the right thing. It's really about abundance, trying to find a way to thrive, mm -hmm. to give yourself energy and well-being, and to be able to do the things that matter in life to have energy and well-being and to thrive. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hyman. These are amazing principles to live by for week two. Um, those following the Daniel plan, we wish you the best as you interact and just have fun exploring some new foods this week, adding a few new things in, checking out a few labels. This is an adventure. We're so glad that you joined us and are part of it with us.